ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر صدق الله العلي Shabab, come forward, please. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wafdal as-salawati wa atabu taslim ala ashrafi khalqillahi muhammad wa alihi al-tahirin. Please make sure that you keep your mobile phones in your pockets and uh, be paying attention. If I can't see you, that means you cannot see me. In our religion, Islam, we know that the topic of tarbiyah is very, very important. And we know that our main focus in our life is all about how we are able to become better people. Kamal, perfection, is an intrinsic ideal goal that each and every person wants to achieve. Even with someone who is way off the track they think that them pursuing that kind of lifestyle is a type of kamal. Kamal is natural and tabi'i where each and every person wants to achieve. And therefore, our duty is to find out what kind of kamal is true kamal and perfection. Where are we able to acquire that level of perfection? And it all comes down to the most simple of things that we are able to do. Most importantly, self-discipline. There will always be times where iwala ashtid kum hajj. There will always be times where you, as a human being, as a Muslim, will face challenges. And there will be absolutely nobody around you to remind you of your duty as far as a human being, as far as a Muslim. And therefore... The responsibility that you have is an individual, independent responsibility. There are many places in the Holy Quran that remind us how we need to focus on ourselves and not be so worried and concerned about others around us. In many instances, it is a lost battle when you start thinking about what this person does, about what that person does. And in all of that confusion, at times, probably even forget your own self. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu alaykum anfusakum. Worry about yourself. Be obsessed about yourself. لا يضركم من ضل إذا اهتديتم إن اهتديتم لا يضركم من ضل إن اهتديتم Is that right, Hajj? You should not be worried or concerned about those who fall astray if you have been guided. 
So it's all about guidance for us. And guidance in most cases comes individually. Yes, we have a responsibility of not only reminding ourselves, but also reminding others around us to make sure that we help others, that we assist others, that we are like one part of a whole body, that if one part of the body falls sick, it will affect the other parts of the body. You as a member of the Muslim Ummah, it does concern you if, for example, this person loses um, the track or that person, you know, becomes a little bit confused in his life or someone committing sin, for example. And this is why we have what we call Al-Amr bil Ma'roof wa Nahi an al-Munkar. لا يضركم من ضل إذا إذا أو إذ إذ إذا إذا حيرتونا هسا إذا اهتديتم أوكي نعم فن so yeah that's why it's very important if someone's reading Quran to in most cases make sure that they got it in front of them لا يضرك من ضل إذا اهتديتم. If you have been guided, it shouldn't really concern you, affect you. Sorry, I shouldn't use the word concern. I should use the word it shouldn't affect you. If you're on the path, on the right path, and this person slips, you remind them, you guide them, you assist them. But if that's the choice that they've made in their life. What can you do? It shouldn't affect you. It should not affect you. Amr bil ma'roof wa nahi an al-munkar, which means enjoining the good and forbidding the wrong, doesn't mean slapping someone because they're, for example, doing this, or you know, breaking their uh, car because they're doing that. No. A lot of things that we do is a form of Amr bil Ma'roof wa Nahi an al Munkar. Me, right now, I am doing Amr bil Ma'roof wa Nahi an al Munkar. You, right now, sitting down, you're also doing Amr bil Ma'roof wa Nahi an al Munkar. You inviting someone for a dinner or for a program or uh, going out and having something uh, together is a form of Amr bil Ma'roof wa Nahi an al Munkar. Attending a dars, attending a lesson is Amr bil Ma'roof wa Nahi an al Munkar. The theme of Amr bil Ma'roof wa Nahi an al Munkar is, is very, very vast. And that's why a lot of us do Amr bil Ma'roof wa Nahi an al Munkar. Probably not under that title, but that's what it is. You're enjoining, you're encouraging good, and you're also preventing bad. Yani you being here tonight hopefully it's not too late or anything, is preventing you from, for example, going to um, the city, Methanen. Or any of these other examples that are very, very simple to do. Because whether we like it or not, we are easily influenced. We are easily influenced. The same way as you are picky in choosing which manu shop to eat or which burger place to go and have. I haven't had a burger for a long time. Or, huh? What? Why G? Where's that? Isn't Chaba Buns better or something? Or? What was I talking about? <laughs> you, you being picky where you eat, manush, which manush place or which burger place or which style of clothes that you are wearing, but having no care or concern about the type of people that you associate with or you hang around with, thinking 
that you have it all under control, which is most certainly never the case. Because whether you like it or not, there is going to be an influence. Qulli, as they say in Arabic, Qulli man tu'ashir, aqul laka man ant. Tell me who you hang around with and I'll tell you what kind of a person you are. Unfortunately, we don't have those kind of standards even when it comes to whoever it may be, the, you, don't, you don't have to be only hanging around with, for example, Muslims. Doesn't the, the person that you associate with or you interact with could even be a non-Muslim, but they have high moral standards, they have good akhlaq, they are a conservative person, and they're not desensitizing you to certain things that they might be committing and therefore we always need to keep our guard up in making sure that our surroundings are very very clean very clean when we talk about tarbiyah how to raise yourself this is the topic for tonight how do you rabbi yourself how do you raise yourself in an Islamic way, living an Islamic lifestyle? Living an Islamic lifestyle, how do you do that? It all comes down to the very foundation of not only what's happening at home, in your family, also you as an individual outside of your house. Many people in the, the house, the angels, Outside, they are a completely different person. Many people, Ramadan, mashallah, alayhum. After Ramadan, shaitan, iblis, walking and talking. Same thing when it comes to Muharram. Same thing when it comes to ziyara season. Oh, I'm going for ziyara. Right? And then they have Salafis. And then they post it and everyone thinks, MashaAllah, this person is, but they have the same narcissistic, very arrogant, very egotistic kind of attitude and behavior. And they wrong people and they cheat people and they lie and they gossip and they do this and they do that. And all of these other amrab, all of these other illnesses that are unfortunately a plague in any society. So therefore, when it comes to influence, how do we look at the, our surroundings in making sure that we immunize ourselves? We vaccinate ourselves. Do we have any anti-vaxxers here? that we vaccinate ourselves, we immunize ourselves. Yes, sometimes it comes back to the parent style that is being used. Sometimes the parent is not giving the son, the daughter, the proper tools in how they need to rabbi themselves. Sometimes the parent is too much of a dictator, has absolute control, doesn't allow the son, the daughter to breathe. They're, they've got the rope on too tight. Some people, they have even left the rope. They're not even holding on to the rope. Sometimes it is holded 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 held held hand holden onto holden holden onto commodore holden onto right but it is loose enough for the child to also make their own decisions as far as right and wrong look at these different approaches to tarbiyah of children 
which one are you which one do you think is a good way which one would be damaging of course the authoritarian one is damaging and so is the uninvolved one damaging oh do what you want to take my car come back whenever you want to doesn't matter you don't need to tell me where you're going you know i love you too 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 caring too 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 loving is also very very damaging how many times do we see spoiled little brats who turn out later on in their life because they don't know what the word no means what's no mean jojo huh pay attention they don't know what the word no means how do you spell the first no k-n-o-w they don't know what the first no means or what no means so later on when they're thrown in the jungle of real life and someone says no they have a panic attack they have a nervous breakdown and somehow they have to get what it is that they want because mom ta'allamin they haven't learnt the boundaries of what is good and what is bad and that's why a good parent is a parent that says no a bad parent is a parent that never says no and sometimes even when the parent can say yes they should also at times say no for the sake of teaching you boundaries and you the son the daughter you need to respect that and you need to know that no is not always bad so that's why when we look at when we look at this right that's not really good when we look at this that's also not good when we look at that that's also not good this is the best which means the parent has authority and you respect that authority no means shunu no and yes means yes okay understanding these boundaries are really really important and respecting that when the parent says no you're not going to get this you don't need to insist and nag and ask again and again and again for that is it working or it's not working all right And that's why, of course, the, these are just simple examples I got from the um, from the internet about you understanding these boundaries as well, right? Knowing how you need to be conducting yourself in a really, really good way, okay? And that's why, if you don't understand what you know these boundaries are and why it is that for example you're only supposed to be spending this much time on uh gaming or on uh having fun here or there or you know uh, when it comes to responsibilities taking out the rubbish or cleaning up after yourself or helping with the cooking and the cleaning or whatnot what is the purpose an objective when when with the parent asking you to do all of these things without there being somehow a good effect 
a good result in all of this. When it comes to tarbiyah, in a lot of cases, you, as, I'm, as I've said, you need to be rabbiing yourself. You need to be rabbiing yourself. How many times have we spoken about the common complaint that so many parents have as far as having to repeat themselves again and again and again about you having to get up and pray or taking out the rubbish or simple things like that that don't need to in any way be repeated but unfortunately due to certain reasons of you not being as responsible as you should you have to be reminded again and again and again the whole objective of what i'm talking about tonight is you focusing on yourself and you being self-disciplined you raising yourself you doing that tarbiyatul nafs you making sure that the direction that you're choosing in life is the right direction whether or not your parent is one of those four that we just mentioned it doesn't matter because you know the direction that you're supposed to be choosing you might have a parent who you know has given you the free for all and has to told you that you know you're able to do whatever you want to do and you're completely independent or maybe you live on your on your own what was that like a dragon you maybe you live on your own right but at the same time you need to make sure that the direction that you have is right needs versus wants and we've spoken about this so many times before haven't you i want something i need something there's a big difference i want a hood what is it hood ridge is that like new or huh what is that your new brand i want for example jimmy chu jimmy chu is that supposed to be funny difference between that and you needing something in our society today it's all about consumerism it's all about you wanting but they're making you feel that you need it and we were speaking about this a few nights ago with some brothers that that if you have an old phone people criticize you or an old car people criticize you so much that you even become insecure about your own self that you become self-conscious about something as simple as me wearing the same jacket and not changing it or wearing or having the same phone or not being really caring about you know the brands that i wear that i'm not walking around with someone else's surname or things like that consumerism and think about it and how much we have been sucked into this capitalist society today where our needs and our wants are very very cloudy that we really don't know what we want and what we need and it's rather society that is pushing us towards that whatever it may be not saying that you're that you should be wearing a maf in clothes not saying that you shouldn't be elegant and presentable how many times have we spoken about making sure that you look nice you smell nice right which is really really important but within the boundaries of shara as well you walk down the streets for example especially when it comes to our sisters with hijabi women 
And them thinking, some of them unfortunately thinking that the only way for them to be presentable is by doing haram and having makeup in public. So much so that a hijabi woman that doesn't have makeup looks out of place and is pressured by those. Oh, you're so beautiful, but if you have a little bit of eyeliner and you put some mascara on your cheeks and lipstick above your eyes and these kind of things make them feel more presentable feel more self-conscious about themselves and it will boost their self-esteem as well but that's certainly not the case it makes absolutely no sense for you as a Muslim to build your self-esteem on something haram. I was reading about this this week where how many times do you hear people say I listen to music because I have depression or because it calms me down. It's proven psychologically that things like music aggravate your depression and has no effect whatsoever in calming you down and how shameful is it that someone would say that i like listening to uh, fayrouz or gugush or uh, kadi b right instead of listening to surah al-waqi'ah or quran or Mullah Basim or something like that. It's very shameful, isn't it? Was it G or B? And that's why addictions is never, never good, whatever it may be. Even if it's in matters of religion, for you to be extreme in matters of religion, it's also not good. For you to be 24 sa'a Rukur Sujood, or too extreme in certain things. La ifrat wa la tafriyat. We should never have any of two extremes. Always moderation. Always moderation. Right? Nowadays, look at all these uh, illnesses that are popping up as a result of addiction to social media, to screens, problems with necks, problems with eyes, problems with attention span, problems with uh, low self-esteem, and all of these other things. Thinking that, listen, thinking that, Ali, Ruhu Good Yama, please. Who else? Yes. This is the third time you've you've interrupted me in my in in the program tonight, and everyone asks online, "Who's Jojo? Who's Jojo?" What was I saying? Other than Jojo, what was I saying? Thank you so much. Where's everyone else, lad? Illnesses from addictions and every single, um, you know, every once in a while you come up with, you know, new studies saying that this, we thought it was good, but it's bad. Or this is happening as a result of this. And all of these other things. And you all know, especially my regulars, how many times we have uh, spoken about this. Everything comes back to moderation. No one's saying, no, don't do your gaming and don't play roadblocks and don't do this and don't go fishing or don't do that. No, everything is about moderation. Where's Dolphin? What do we need to do as far as controlling ourselves in our tarbiyah? in our self-raising self raising flower, in our self-raising, we want to raise ourselves. No one picked up on that, right? All right, good. 
in our raising of ourselves, what do we need to do? Number one, your identity. Your name is Ali, not Alex. Right? Doesn't matter how much you wear, what you do, how you, bo how bogan you sound, you're still attached to the identity that you have. Be confident, be proud of your identity, of who you are, that you are a follower of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam, that you represent Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam in everything that you do, that's a part of your heritage, that's a part of your culture, that's a part of who you are. That's the first foundation that you need to have. Number two, when it comes to raising yourself, the most common complaint that so many people have is, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. There's a million and one things that you can do. From mowing the lawn, to picking up on a hobby, to doing Rubik's Cube. A million and one things that you're able to do. To read a book, put your hand up if you have not read a book all year this year. Don't lie. Other than Quran. Don't tell me Quran. Yeah, put your hand up. Why are you, why are you shy? We're not going to... All right. Shh. Shamlan, 100% you haven't read a book. What did you read? About what? Construction. And by the way, uh, Harry Potter isn't included, by the way. All right? 100%, 90% of them are chadabin, kazebs, as Mr. Busi would say, kazebs. Right? There's a lot of things that you can do. What's, bo what's, what's being bored? Us and sitting down with your family and interacting with your family and doing something that is useful for yourself. There's so many things that you're able to do. But don't be distracted by these things having some kind of benefit. Yes, sometimes you just want to have entertainment that has no benefit. You want to binge on a Netflix Netflix program, Methalen. Okay, but don't make that your daily routine. No, that's not good. Socializing. Some people do too much socializing sahra wa sahra staying up until 11 30 12 1 every second night useless kind of gadat no point to it no kind of benefit going out socializing even with the good people even with the, when if they are good people you need to have balance but of course it becomes very, very damaging when you're socializing and interacting with the wrong people. With the wrong people. And of course, we need to control that socializing. We also need to control our curiosity as well. Sometimes there are certain things that are harmful for you that you don't know of. And because of your curiosity, you want to find out. Someone says to you, Yaba, look, you know, don't go there or don't listen to this or don't see that or don't do this. And enter, you become curious. But then later on, you realize that it was very, very damaging and the damage is irreversible because curiosity killed the Right? <coughs> what do we need to do? Number one, we have to always remember that we are always optimistic, that we are positive, that we are never a half empty cup. What? 
Yep, tfaddal, Mr. Journalist. Yeah. Hey, wait. Thank you. Excuse me, Mister. Why are you laughing, Mister? You have anything nicer to say, Mister Kahi? Yeah. <laughs> oh, waalaikum salam. Say, wearing black again. What happened to your dolphin's top? Is it navy? Is it navy, Ali? <laughs> She's gonna color blind. Understanding, knowing between what is right and what is wrong, what is halal. And what is haram? What is good? And what is? Who said wrong? What is good and what is bad? And always find alternatives. Your mates are going somewhere. Your mates are going somewhere. And you know that that is a no-go zone for you. What are you going to do? Sit down and nag? Find an alternative. Do something that is going to be useful. Right? People go and travel, uh, for example, uh, to a certain place. You, you can also have many other alternative options that will be useful for you as well. Right? Because when it comes to effective discipline, it's not only about reward and punishment. But it's also about how you need to be presenting yourself. Let's say there is no reward and there is no punishment. Would you still do it if it's wrong? Would you still do it if it's right? There's no one for Grasek on top of you, monitoring you. You're away from your family. You're away from your parents. You're away from someone who knows your father or your mother, would you still be doing the right thing and staying away from the wrong thing? You're all by yourself and you have access to your phone, a phone or to internet and um, are you going to be making sure that you're avoiding those kind of things and sometimes things are given very innocently. We said curiosity, didn't we? That you need to control your curiosity. You want to feel, you want to experience how it feels to be high. Right? And someone says, oh yeah, you know, like I've got a new batch. It just came in from... Los Angeles and fresh off the boat Ta'al let's have a few puffs and then you're saying to yourself oh you know and then and you say to yourself oh you know how does it feel how does it feel to do that you know how does it feel to sniff petrol or spray paint or Glue. Yeah, and I've seen these things myself. You know, I've been to certain countries where you see little kids, little za'atit, little young children, right, with paper bags and paint in them or glue in them, right? And these are very simple addictions. I think this is like 18 plus kind of pictures, aren't they? Right? But anyway. I should have put like a warning or something, but anyway. Um, you know, you see these like people like doing marijuana and for example, um, doing that. What's that called? Argila, right? Sniffing. And look, how, look at the differences in how they look as well, right? Look how they were before and look how they were after. Should I zoom in? What is she know who I had to zoom in? <laughs> right? Right? Drug abuse. Yeah. 
in a lot of cases, in most cases, it's not a one-off thing. It turns into a really, really, really damaging kind of lifestyle. And you think we're immune from these things? Nobody is immune. <laughs> What's going on over there? Nobody is immune. Busi, slap them, please. How about gangs? Gangster life. All right? You want to be from the south side or you want to be, you want to wear the blue or the red because you think that, you know, the gangster life is going to give you meaning or it's going to give you new brotherhoods, all these other things. You end up being either stabbed or killed by your gang, fellow gang member, or end up in jail, or end up killed. And any ex member, any ex gang member will tell you exactly the same. Right? And Mr. Journalist, quickly read out the reasons why some people join gangs. Learning disabled. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> so yeah, okay. Carry on. Hyperactivity. We know someone who's like that here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> good. Hostility. Yes. Feeling unsafe in your neighborhood. Who knows these signs? Who knows these signs? Anyone knows them? What are they, Jojo? What are they? Shukula, zoom in or zoom in today? Hassan, Hassan, I'm in the middle of my Friday night program. Say salam to everyone. Say salam to everyone. Say salam to everyone. Say salam to everyone. Salam everyone. Yalla bye. <laughs> All right. What were we doing? Okay. Another problem is that is common, unfortunately, especially in today's society, and it all happens as a result of those things that I just mentioned. Insecurity, peer pressure, uh, turning to social media instead of having real friends, having um, cyber friends that you don't even know, um, problems here and there. All of these things end in depression. That's why they say that the more you use Facebook and whatnot, the more depressed you become. It's not me that's saying that's what psychologists say, right? It's a serious issue that everyone needs to be care careful of. It's all about you rubbing, raising yourself, right? Which is really important. Another common thing that now here in Australia, it's a pandemic. It's a pandemic especially among young boys and girls, and that is vapping. Why is it that these little kids in all schools today, especially here in New South Wales, toilets have to be locked? Because these boys and girls, they like to have a few puffs in 
the toilets during breaks or during class or whatnot. And look what it says here, right? This is for New South Wales, by the way. The teachers estimated between 20 and 60% of students have been caught vaping. And we had this, didn't we have this problem in camp? Little kids, little kids vaping. And this is again, it's all about the selling tactic that is being used, the colorful kind of vapes that are being sold with nice pictures on them. Snort cocaine and don't vape. <laughs> Just imagine someone cuts that out in the recording and says, Sheikh Said is saying this. It's really bad. It's really bad. Vaping is very, very damaging. Va vaping is worse. So I'm not a, a, a doctor or anything, but vaping is really bad. All that smoke that you have to inhale. And Aslan, I've tried it a few times, once or twice maybe, uh, coughing for half an hour. Right? How do these people vape? And they're proud of it as well. And that's why there, it is being said that they're going to ban vaping. Inshallah they do. Inshallah they make it illegal because of how damaging it is. Did we not talk about addiction and removing any addiction that you have? You have to be in control of whatever it may be. If, whatever it is, coffee, anything, you be in control. And you can, when you say, that's it, that means that's it. That's what self-discipline means. And how many people have that? Has the Ramadan that passed? Straight after Salah, ha, where's Haji Fulan? Oh, wallah, he's outside, he's having a cigarette. What happened with Ramadan and fasting and teaching, self-control and willpower and all these other things? Right? Look at these colors. Right? All of that is making it more appealing for young boys and girls and we're falling into this trap and look at how you it's usually being introduced 59 percent through friends ah oh, yeah just have a puff oh no i'm not going to are oh, you chicken do it and then because of peer pressure, they have it, and then it gets worse and worse and worse. And then they start doing f like styles with it, you know, doing like horns and, and here and there and all these other things. And then, and then their lungs collapse, and they're in hospital. Read about it yourself. Read about it yourself. And how many of these cases are there? Hadha Miftakhar. He's proud of his accomplishment. They're going to hire him for NASA because he's making donuts with the smoke that he's doing. Right? How about online and what you are doing online? This is really, really important. Really important. The information that you're sharing. The time that you are using. If you are going into areas that you know are haram with explicit images or scenery that you know that you shouldn't be seeing. How about, maybe not the case of being a bully or a victim of bully, but being a bully maybe, not the case of you being a victim, but maybe you being a bully, you being a keyboard warrior, harassing people. Unfortunately, that's also something that's common. How are you 
rubbing yourself if that's the kind of person you are that you think behind but by, by you having a fake account that you are free of any accountability no that's certainly not the case and of course we know about scams as well it's important for us to have strong faith good akhlaq healthy surrounding and focus on ibadah as well how do you start your day do you wake up for salat al-fajr do you recite dua sabah of imam ali alayhi salam do you recite ziyarat ashura of imam hussein alayhi salam do you recite dua tawassul dua kumail dua nudba are you adding more meaning to your prayers by praying nafila prayers or salatul ghufayla do you even know what salatul ghufayla is these are really really uh, important things model and teach yani you set examples and you teach others that example be kind be disciplined i'm just going to rush through these okay correct yourself if you made a mistake sallah nafsak right follow with your plans and your ambitions in life and always make sure that you do things for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because tarbiyah is all about improvement development and empowerment right we've spoken about that here there's a beautiful uh, piece of poetry that says lisanaka la tadhkur bihi awrata amrin amran falaka awratun walin nasi al sunu you have you have of course issues that you want to conceal if you're going to be talking about other people other people have tongues and they can talk about you as well right hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasibu make sure that you judge yourself before you are judged and of course rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi has said this beautiful hadith about you talking ill about someone right and how god will retaliate in that there's another nice hadith from Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam where he says you have to avoid lying even if you think that that's a joke don't lie and say ah oh, it was a joke no because those kind of supposed joke lies lead to real serious lies as well that's really important for us to remember when it comes to tarbiyah our focus needs to be on how i can rabbi and raise myself walhamdulillah rabbil alamin wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina muhammad wa alihi tahirin let's stand up for